In the last episode, we finished the exterior of the workshop by installing all of that black composite cladding. And in this episode, we will be preparing to give the workshop power by doing all of the first fix electrics. <laughs> And a little disclaimer going into this video, even though I have wired up several sockets and lights before, I do not want to be on the hook for anyone that decides to electrocute themselves. And therefore this video is intended to be used alongside a fully qualified electrician. And before we can put any of the electrics in on the inside, we are first gonna to need to hook up the electric from my cabin over there to the workshop. And in order to do that, we need to bury some armored cable. So the first thing we're doing is actually going to be putting down some polythene to put all of the soil on as we're digging it out. Then we'll dig out the trench, lay the cable in, and well, we'll just show you. Yeah, you get in. You, you background dig. Look busy. The trench is now pretty much done. We are just going around and making sure that we are at the correct depth the entire run. And that is just to make sure that the cable isn't going to be pierced by anything that I put through the lawn in the future. I'm not going to lie, this has probably been the hardest step in terms of effort since we actually put that concrete base in all those months ago. So if you are digging this yourself and you're not using a digger, then mentally prepare yourself. Also, if you are watching this entire series through, then one top tip I would have for you is get this dug out when you've got the digger there digging out the base. You're going to save loads of time and you're going to save loads of effort. And now it's time to lay that cable in. The cable that we're putting in the ground is armoured and because of that you don't actually need to put it in any sort of conduit. But because I have quite a lot of leftover guttering, what I'm going to do is cut this in half on my table saw widthways and then use this just to put over the top of that armoured cable just for that extra layer of protection. And whilst I'm here and I've got the trench dug, I figured I may as well bury this as well. And this is armored Cat5 cable. So these are both gonna go side by side next to each other in the same trench. I figured for, I think this was about 50 pounds to buy this cable. I may as well put it in to prevent me redigging this trench in the future. So right here is where the cable will be connecting into the workshop. It needs to connect in 450 mil above what is the ground level. So that's 600 mil there. So I've got a little bit to play with for the electrician. So we know that we can bury that in there. And then as, as it's covered, I'm actually gonna just push in a load of soil. And then we also are gonna make sure that before we put in all of that remaining soil, we do stamp it in with our feet just to make sure it's nice and compact. And putting all of that soil and grass on polythene meant that we could just lift it up and the majority of it just fell right back into the trench. It ain't bad, it ain't bad, is it? As you can see, all of the grass has now been covered over on the trench that we've dug. It is sticking out the ground just a little bit. So right now it does look a little bit unsightly, but I'm hoping that in a few days time that that will all finish in lovely. Now the electric cable runs from the fuse box to the workshop. We can move on to doing the electrics on the inside. One thing that I've been very keen to do is actually give you guys a tour on the inside of the workshop. Now over here next to the door, I'm probably going to have some sort of small French cleat wall. And this is also where I plan to push up that rolling workbench once I've built it. Behind me is the side wall that has no window and this is going to serve as the new backdrop for a lot of my videos. And because of this, I'm going to have a huge French cleat wall where I can hang all of my latest and greatest tools and I'm not going to have any cupboards along the bottom. Now over here is the five meter long stretch of back wall. And along all of this side, I want to have a series of wall units and then underneath a counter with storage below it. And this is that entire wall, just so you get an idea for the space that I'm working with. And finally, behind me is the window wall, and this is where I plan to have a desk below the window, as well as some shelves or maybe a wall unit on either side of that window. And because I have a rough idea of how I want the layout of this workshop to look once everything is done, I know exactly where I want to put my plug sockets. Now, if you've never installed a socket before, I'm gonna give you a very quick crash course in how to do the first fix. This piece of wood here is going to represent our wall. Now for my workshop, I've decided to use these metal back boxes. You can also do a similar method using the dry lining back boxes, but personally, I'm not the biggest fan of those. In order to do this with back boxes, you would then need to fix these to the wall using some wood screws. Then you wanna grab yourself something long and pointy and a hammer and knock out the two pieces of metal 
on the top of each of them. And this is going to give you somewhere to feed in your cable into the actual center of these back boxes. Now the cable thickness that you will use is typically gonna be two and a half mil for sockets. However, I do recommend that you speak to an electrician to confirm your exact requirements depending on what you need. A good example of this is the fact that I am going to be setting up my workshop with one of these stop buttons, which will automatically cancel all of the power to every single socket. And because I needed that, I did actually need to install all of my sockets with four mil twin and earth cable. And once you've fed in your cables, you are then ready to insulate and plasterboard. Now, all of that is called the first fix. It is only after that that you are ready to do the second fix, which means you can finally put your socket fronts on. And after a lot of consideration, I have finally settled on putting 15 double plug sockets around the entire edge of the workshop, evenly spaced out as much as I can get them. Now, I did have a lot of friends and family try and talk me out of this, saying that it is probably quite excessive. <laughs> I don't think so. And whilst I don't disagree with them, I figured that for the price of putting in one of these sockets at this stage, which roughly works out at about seven or eight pounds, I won't regret putting in too many, whereas I may find myself in the future regretting not putting in enough. And before I can put any of the back boxes in on the wall, I am preparing by firstly measuring out the exact height that I want each of these sockets to be and putting a pencil line on either side of the timbers. I've cut down this remaining two by four from when I did the walls to the correct width. So this should bang nicely in between these two studs here. And because of the actual depth of each of these back boxes, you do need to make sure that you have your piece of wood set in enough so that by the time that you plasterboard, it finishes level with the front of this back box. Letting this back box stick out about 10 mil is perfect. And to keep this consistent, what I found is an offcut of oak that I have been putting behind this piece of wood, which then allows me to take a rubber mallet and hammer it to a consistent depth on both sides. And because I know that is in the right place, I'm just going to fix it in place using some 70 mil wood screws on either side. Now those pieces of timber are in place, I can fit the back boxes to them. This is one of those jobs that is a lot easier to do if you have a laser level like I have here. So you can see here that I've got the laser level set up and the line here is just touching the bottom of this metal back box. So I know that that one is perfect. And the idea is that I will not move that laser and I will go around the entire perimeter and just make sure that that laser line falls on every single one. However, if you don't, you can still fit these just using a spirit level like I'm showing. And even though I was using a laser level, I did still get out a small spirit level just to make sure that each individual back box was level with itself. After all of those were in place, I went round and popped out the top two pieces of metal in each of the back boxes and fitted in a rubber grommet that will prevent the cable from snagging when I put them in later on. I have also decided to put one double plug socket in the ceiling and that is just there in case I want to connect some lights whilst I'm filming a video or I might want to set up an extractor fan and avoid having trailing cables going along one side. After the back boxes were installed I could go around and install all of the cable. So in order to feed these cables through the uprights here I am using a 12 mil drill bit and I'm just drilling a very small hole at the back of these timbers. And the benefit of doing these holes for the cables so far back is that when it comes to plasterboarding, even if I use quite a long screw, like a 50 mil screw, there's no way that I'm going to hit that cable once it's been fit through there. This also meant that the cable would poke through just behind those pieces of timber that I put in for the back boxes to sit against, which made feeding them into the back boxes themselves a lot easier. As you can see here, I've now pulled this cable through to where it's going and I've pushed it through the grommet. Now, what most people would usually do here is grab one of these cable clips, put it over the top and then hammer that in. However, what I would rather have is a totally flat surface so that when it comes to putting the insulation board in here, I don't have to notch a bit out. So what I'm doing is grabbing a 19 mil drill bit and then drilling out this top piece of wood here. And as you can see, that has created a lovely gap for my cable to sit in and be tucked in. And now all of these sockets are in. You can see that this is where up here is where I'm going to have my fuse box. I've got a cable starting here going from where the fuse box will be. It runs to the first socket. That's going to go around the entire room. You can see here it's going into all 15 of these sockets. Ignore the insulation. That's for the next video. 
all the way around underneath the window here and it ends down in this socket right down here. I also took this opportunity to put an external socket on either side of the workshop which was a lot easier said than done. Look at us taking the cladding off, aren't we mental? So this is the hole that I've drilled from the inside at 450 mil. And the reason that I've drilled this in is I want to have one of these external sockets mounted on the outside. Now, in order to do that, what I'm going to need to first do is mount this base plate here. And I didn't want to fix this directly to the cladding. So what I need to do is put in some stronger timber behind where this is going to be. So I have somewhere strong enough to actually fix these screws that I will need to to melt this. Then I could reinstall the cladding that I had previously removed, drilled a hole so the cable could be poked through, and fit the back box for the external sockets, making sure to pre-drill all of the holes so I didn't split the cladding. Then I wired it up and screwed the front of this socket on. With all of my sockets prepared for insulation and plasterboarding, I could now move on to the lights. And starting off, I decided that I was going to put five down lights in the overhang on the front of the workshop. So for each of the down lights, you can see that I've got a little bit of green masking tape in every place that I want to drill out the hole. And in order to drill these out, I'll be using this bit here. This is a 73 millimeter bit, and I have tested it on an offcut of OSB just to make sure that the lights fit well, and they do. And I don't think it's just me, but I always find stuff like this really nerve wracking because any slight mistake means redoing an awful lot of work. So I'm gonna take my time and hopefully get every single one of these right. Turns out this is a really messy job. And now that those holes are drilled in the overhang, I can wire it up using this one and a half millimeter twin and earth cable. Now I've got all of my cables fed through for these down lights. I'm going to be installing these. These are lap down lights that I bought from Screwfix. They were about seven pounds each and I've got them in my bathroom and in my kitchen. So I know that these are gonna do a good job. And the way that these work is you pop out these little pieces of plastic here just by pinching them at the bottom. You've got the letter L and N to indicate which is the live and neutral. You can then slide in your two cables and push them in firmly. There we go. I'm just sliding a little bit of earth sleeving over the earth cable as well. After speaking to my electrician, I did have to go back to each one of these spotlights and connect each of the earths together using these Wago clips. And then you finish this off by pushing on those pieces of plastic. And now that's done, you can fold up these little side latches here, push it into the hole at an angle so it all fits through. And then sort of with a bit of force, push that up into place just like that because they're going along those straight lines of the soffit they are all in a perfect straight line and it's hard to pick this up on camera but I've made sure that there's an equal gap of 118 centimeters in between each of those spotlights. When it comes to calculating how many lights you'll need in your workshop there are calculators online that you can use in order to work out the total amount of lumens that they recommend. I'll link the one that I used in the description below. After doing the calculations, it told me that I would need to have a total of 3,200 lumens in order to have a high intensity of light. And I do want the workshop to be quite bright because the things I'll be doing in there will require a lot of visibility. These spotlights that I got from Screwfix are each 420 lumens each, and I'm going to be putting 10 of them in two rows of five on the inside of the workshop, which will put me well above the recommended lumens that I needed. So I'm gonna have one row of four spotlights running down this side of the workshop, and then a symmetrical four running down this side of the workshop. Using a tape measure and a pen, I'm going to mark up 70 centimeters away from the side of the wall on both ends. And then using a laser level, I will then make my marks along the entire row, making sure that they are positioned in the correct place. And I am being careful to remember that I still need to put 100 mil of insulation on the bottom of these joists here. So what that means is when I actually drill the hole to feed the cables through, I want to go above that insulation. So I want to be drilling that hole to feed the cable through right at the top here so that when I put the insulation in, it doesn't interfere with that. I do also want to be very careful that when I'm drilling this hole, 
but I don't go too close to this OSB board at the top. It is quite thick and it's unlikely, but you do just want to make sure that you avoid going through the roof because obviously then you'll have a hole in your roof and that's not a good thing. Oh, and I nearly forgot to say, I'm just using a normal 10 millimeter drill bit to actually drill these holes. And the reason for that is the cable that you use for lighting is actually really thin. So that is actually plenty to get it through to the other side of the joist. So as you can see, every single place where I want one of those internal spotlights, I have put this one and a half mil twin and earth cable, and I've left about 500 mil dangling down from the ceiling. And that is all of the cables now in the ceiling, ready for the electrician to come later this week to check everything over. I hope you found this episode useful. If you did, then please consider smashing the like button, hit subscribe, and I'll see you next time when we finally finish the workshop by doing insulation and plasterboard.